ministry has brought me closer to the Lord. All I can do is just kneel down and just put my arms out like this. You knew it was Jesus. I knew it was the Lord. That was the defining moment when we actually left. And that was on a Sunday in April. <clears throat> then about 6 o'clock that night, 6.30, I get this email back from him, from David Taylor, this nasty email calling me a traitor, calling me... Um, that God never validated you like he validates me. You're going to go to hell, you and your family. You're going to be cursed. You're going to die early death of sickness and all this stuff. And here this is a man that's supposed to be having healing um, services and want people healed of cancer and all this stuff. And here he's turning around in the back and cursing you, saying you're going to go to hell and you're going to die. You know, Talk to other women who have been by him. Um, I have seen texts and emails very provocative things that he would say to these women and tell them, you know, I want to do this and this and this with you and it's okay for them to do that. Some of the women aren't married, some of the women are married and that's part of what broke up some of the marriages is because he would start texting some of these women and tell them to leave their husband or, you know, you need to be with me and come be my um, spiritual daughter and I'll be your spiritual father and then they kind of go from there. For those who belong to Joshua Media Ministries International, JMMI, the David Taylor-based organization is a way to the kingdom of God, a journey guided by a fully-fledged prophet. However, the lead pastor, David E. Taylor, is a controversial evangelist who claims to have face-to-face -face appearances with Jesus and performs miracles. Pastor David has also been accused of running a cult-like ministry, abusing his followers, and misusing church funds for his lavish lifestyle. In this video, I will go through the controversies surrounding the man of God, Pastor David E. Taylor. Keep watching. Pastor David E. Taylor's net worth is estimated at least $103 million, making him one of the wealthiest religious leaders in the world. Pastor David E. Taylor's primary source of income is his ministry, Joshua Media Ministries International, JMMI. Part of his income comes from investments worth millions of dollars in Procter & Gamble company stock. However, other sources suggest that his net worth is much lower, ranging between $200,000 and $700,000. Based on this, his net worth may vary depending on income from his ministry, expenses, and recently, legal troubles. But out of these fluctuating digits, Pastor David bought an $8.3 million Florida mansion from a Tampa Bay Buccaneers co-owner. The mansion has 10 bedrooms, 10 bathrooms, a wine room, a ballroom, and a guest house. He spends over $30,000 in church donations on a designer wardrobe, including Louis Vuitton and Versace clothes. He also owned three luxury vehicles, one of which was converted into a limousine, and that's half as alarming as his investing in Procter & Gamble company stock worth millions of dollars. Pastor David said he was a very frugal person, and that his critics were motivated by racism. Pastor David also paid legal fees for his various lawsuits, such as those involving financial corruption, sexual misconduct, and tax fraud. These are some ways that Pastor David E. Taylor earns and spends his money. When asked to make a public statement about his finances, he refused, making it difficult to track his exact income and expenditures. This is despite the many larger allegations that involve sexual assaults. Pastor Taylor was sued by a former employee who alleged that he sexually assaulted her and forced her to have an abortion. He also allegedly manipulated other women into having sexual relationships with him, claiming it was God's will. When called up to answer questions on these, he denied the allegations and said they were part of a social media lynching attempt. How I wish this were true. Pastor Taylor teaches his followers that he is a face-to-face -face prophet who can summon Jesus. He also claims to have the power to raise the dead, heal the sick, and control the weather. He charges thousands of dollars for his crusades and conferences, where he promises to impart these abilities to his attendees. Recently, Pastor Taylor has been investigated by the authorities for various allegations, such as financial corruption, sexual misconduct, and tax fraud. In 2016, he appeared in court regarding charges of financial corruption. At issue was a $2.8 million property in St. Louis that the evangelist alternately called a residential center, home, and a training resort. In 2023, he faced a trial in a case against two of his ministries, Kingdom of God Global Church and JMMI. The case was filed by a former JMMI member who accused Taylor of leading a cult, money laundering, tax fraud, and sex trafficking. He also claimed that Taylor published his social security number and encouraged others to file fraud reports against him with the IRS. 
These are some of the investigations that have been conducted or are ongoing against Pastor David E. Taylor. He has denied all the allegations and said they were part of a conspiracy to destroy his ministry, but even his members do not believe this. For those who left, however, the multi-million dollar church at 20320 Superior Road that police watch daily is a slave labor cult run by an unholy trinity of intimidation, manipulation, and greed. In February 2017, former JMMI member Bernard Knuth was on fire for God. He loaded his stuff into a car and drove from near Minneapolis to near Detroit, eager to become a full-time staff member at the church. He said he was filled with the passion to serve God. Six months after joining, Knuth quit JMMI. He said the work of the church didn't make sense, citing what he called misconduct by church officials, including physical abuse and sleep deprivation. Other former members blamed the organization for exploiting individuals with a desire to serve the Lord by having them ask for donations, which were then used to enrich church leaders. A famous gospel recording artist claimed that David E. Taylor, JMME's minister, and her ex-boyfriend repeatedly broke his obligations as a man of the cloth by having sexual relations with more than 40 women, many of them in his ministry. From March 7th to 9, JMME held a Women of Destiny conference at its Taylor headquarters near the crossroads of North Line and Allen Roads. A four-minute promotional video for the event praises the event. Your life will be amazingly transformed, and its leader, the Lord appeared to David E. Taylor and commissioned him to help you achieve your identity and destiny. In the video, clips of Taylor preaching are mixed with images of female warriors and accompanied by soaring dramatic string music. Happening during Women's History Month, the three-day conference faced protests from individuals calling JMMI a slave labor cult. Some of the protesters were former church members, while others were friends and relatives of former members. The town of Taylor Police Department has received 30 calls about JMMI since 2016. Some seemed harmless, while others, such as a bomb threat, indicated a hostile atmosphere between current and former organization members. On May 5, 2017, a Taylor police report stated that a former member wanted to destroy the church. The report said the man was mad that God made him, but he couldn't kill God, so he would kill the pastor of JMMI. He said he knew how to set up the furnace and or water heater to make them explode. When Taylor police arrived, they offered to check the church for anything odd or to bring in a bomb dog, but church officials refused. On June 8, 2018, a former member of JMMI claimed an assault at the church. The woman said she visited JMMI five days before to see her father and sister, who were both members. When she entered the place, the woman said members challenged her about her bad mood and told them she had no business at the church. The woman said she was then violently shoved and dragged from the property. Almost three months after that incident, at the end of August, a father asked for help from the police to get his son out of the JMMI building. He told officers his son worked at the church but wasn't sure what he did. Taylor police agreed to help, calling it a mental health issue. Seven police officers met at a nearby Burger King with a plan to get the son. Officers covered the west and east sides of the JMMI building and then waited for the son to come to his father's car. When the son finally did so, officers came and put him in handcuffs, placing him in the back of a police car. While this happened, officers saw several men in suits coming out of the building and stood at the entrance, watching and recording. Other Taylor police reports about JMMI include a sudden death and a missing persons report, both filed in November 2017. On November 5, 2017, a 57-year-old man died of natural causes while joining a prayer group at JMMI. Taylor police and firefighters got to the scene around 2.15 a.m. and saw a group of people chanting and singing and touching and pushing down on the body. A witness told officers that when people pray at the church, all of them collapse under the light of God. She told officers the dead man was sleeping and God would wake him up soon. A police detective took some things, including a pile of credit cards and ID, from the dead man and gave them to his wife. The county medical examiner was called to take the man's body. The cause of death was later found to be heart disease. Two days later, a woman reported a friend as a missing person in a different incident. She told police the friend had moved to Michigan two years before to join JMMI and hadn't been seen face to face by his parents in over 18 months. She said church officials told her different stories about where her friend was. She also said she found his car in the parking lot with expired plates. The police report said she was afraid he had been brainwashed. JMME is not a church, but a suspected cash-generating machine. The organization's tax records show a 
total income of $4,096,502 in 2017, all from donations, grants, gifts, and membership fees. From 2013 through 2017, the organization got $12,119,508 in the same categories. The church's tax records name its minister as its best paid employee, but do not specify the amount he earns. Even as millions of dollars were poured into the church, some former members said the congregation's leadership always demanded more. Former members said JMMI told church members to declare homelessness with the state of Michigan to get electronic benefits transfer, EBT cards. Members then supposedly gave the cards to a chosen person who would buy them for everyone at nearby shops. Bob Wheaton, public information officer for the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, which manages welfare money in the state, said the rules for EBT card fraud can be complex. Small details could matter as to whether an activity is legal or not, he said. Asked if JMME was under investigation for EBT card fraud, Wheaton said, at this point I can't say yes or no to whether the Office of Inspector General is looking into this organization. He also said he couldn't discuss whether any complaints had been made against JMMI. Because JMMI is registered as a church, it doesn't pay any property taxes to the city of Taylor. It does, however, pay special assessment charges for things like street lighting, county drainage, etc. According to the city's website, the church currently has over $3,000 in overdue water charges. As it stands, Pastor David E. Taylor is still asking for huge donations and gifts, even going as far as demanding that members do so by compulsion. What will be his fate when more evidence surfaces to disrepute him? I'd like to hear your opinion in the comments section. Thanks for watching.